for his safety, maybe but it's best not to ask. Yeah, definitely for his safety. Questions, feel free to ask. I know Cassandra had one, but I'll, I'll let one of y'all go for it. I wonder if I can make a chisel brush that will never crash. I think it, it has to be super tiny though. Somebody. So like this could work. Let's find out. <clears throat> Uruguay? Where is that? Uruguay? 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 South America? Where in South is it? In the northern or southern or western or eastern part of South America? In Brazil and Argentina, I see. What is Uruguay known for? Is there a thing that like people may mistaking, they, they'll, they'll think of another country, but it's actually from Uruguay? Uruguay? No. Uruguay? Meat. <laughs> oh, okay. No problem. Meat. Let's see if it's the best. This best it's barbecue the in the world. Homer Anthony's vegan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm vegan, so I'll never be able to try it. Unless I change, which is very unlikely. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. How dare you forget? Rub that in my face. Uh, meat, soccer. Soccer? No. Uh. How dare you? Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. I think they call it football. That is the. the oh, term. dang, he got owned, Mateus. <laughs> no, Mateus is, he would probably be the, be the one who would actually, he was being nice to it. He was just like, oh, you Americans would, you Americans, yeah. North Americans wouldn't understand. I'll, I guess I'll have to pull myself down and call it soccer for you, plants. I'm Yes, hey, I'm that's being condescending. <laughs> treating, this, treating us like inferiors. How dare you? <laughs> but I actually played American football for like 11 years. In Ameri Europe. American football, like the one where you yeah. throw, the, throw it and run yeah. And tackles. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. used to play? I used to play, yeah, for 11 years before I came to Australia. I'm in Australia right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I play running back and linebacker. Oh, yeah. How do you like American football? I mean, I'm assuming you like I, it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good sport. I like it, too. I used to play. Um, yeah. But now, like, looking at all the evidence, it's like a very dangerous sport. And I, I don't yeah, think, like, it wasn't dangerous before. Of course it was dangerous, but, like, like we thought dangerous, like, you break a bone or two. Like I'm talking about, like you're gonna be fucking brain dead <laughs> when you're yep. in your fifties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dangerous. That's that's why I left. That's, I last uh, the last year that I played. After every game, I got like like at night every uh, bright light. I was oh dude pretty rough. So yeah, you might already have it, my man. Not to like give you a scare, but that's yeah. like. You should you should like do everything in your power to try to reverse it as possible. Just found out find out uh, too too late. Yeah. Well, when you start to get crazy in your fifties, I know what it is. Yeah, you know what it is. No, oh, that yeah. sucks. Yeah, I don't. I never had that. I never played long enough for any of that. Like I got a concussion once. That's the worst I ever got. I definitely had a few concussions. 
door. Well, yes, yeah, that's kind of the, on, the uh, problem, right? Like, you get several right confessions, side, you'll get the, <clears throat> you'll get the thingy that I was just yeah. talking about. I forget what it's called, but there was like a Will Smith movie about it. And so, um, concussion. No, 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 no. There, there's like a, 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 a specific thing that happens um, to people who All right. had concussions periodically for many years. Uh, ET. Yeah, I don't or know. Something like that. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what, the, what it means. ETE? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. No I don't know what it is either. I just remember watching the movie and thinking to myself, I'm glad I didn't play long. <laughs> That's all that went through my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Chronic traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds all right. That sounds right. Encephalopathy. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But next year we're coming. We're going back to Uruguay and and going back to rugby instead of football. Yeah, rugby you don't tackle uh, for concussions, right? No, you actually tackle the other way around because in football you you uh, you point your head to the ball, so you're actually crossing over the guy. But in in rugby, you're pointing your head to the guy's ass. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Something like that. Yeah. Do you ever see that um, the video of, or that, I'm sure you've heard about that player who used to be uh, like a sprinter? And then in he, rugby? Or? Yeah, in rugby. And then he he joined rugby because I think he had like an injury, so he just couldn't sprint anymore. And then, uh, because most people in rugby don't like sprint full speed, they usually like run fast, but then they like pass back, whatever. But like, yeah, he was such a fast runner. He just would get a break and then like just be gone, and no one could catch him because most rugby players are also not sprinters. They're usually just really big, men, you know, like strong men who can like take hits and take other, people, other men out. Yeah, well, you have the really fast guys also, like the wide receivers. They they are the wings in rugby. I mean, I know what you mean, but. Yeah, you should you know, do more than just running. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Like, this guy was almost, like, purely just a runner. Like, no one's ever done that before. And it, it's kind of – it's fascinating because this is, like, what naturally – the natural evolution of football because football came from rugby, right? And so there was a time, you know, where America was always trying to stand out from, you know, its European oppressors, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. they try to invent these newer sports or alternative versions of sports that already existed. And rugby was one of them. And so, like, the natural evolution of rugby turns into the football that we see today, American football we see today. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And so, like, what I'm getting at is that, like, like it was kind of like – it's kind of like a fast-forwarding of history. It's like it, it was happening again, you know, like, within the rules – the guy wasn't breaking any, you know? He was just running really fucking fast. And so then, yeah. like, this is like what happened with uh, football. Like, they just was like, there's just people who just would run. And they're like, all right, well, then we got to make new rules because now people can't just run. You know, so we'll, we'll create, like, official downs and all this kind of stuff, you know? Like, once the ball touches yeah. the ground, it's, like, officially down, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I'm just saying. Anyway, any art questions? Or go on to ranting about the history of football and rugby. No, Cassandra had one, so I'll... I'll go back. All right. My question, um, what are your thoughts on pushing the design of a character that you want to still be very attractive? I find it easy to, wait, what are your thoughts on pushing the design of a character that you want to still be very attractive? I find it's easy to go really wild and experiment with creatures, aliens, and 
or characters that can be comical looking but when i'm trying to design say a character that i want to be considered attractive like a princess or a love interest sometimes the design ends up looking quite similar to what's been done before because the proportions need to stay fairly normal so <clears throat> there is like a point to be made about what you just said you know so a lot of like you know protagonists are pretty wow. generic actually uh, and a lot of times people don't realize why yeah. it's because you know, it's not necessarily because people can't think of anything better. I mean, in some cases it's true, but it's just because you, if you have a character that kind of like embodies what everybody would imagine themselves could possibly be, it's like, kind of like a horoscope of a, but of a character, like you're horoscoping, but like of a person. Like, you know, when you look at horoscopes, the reason why they, they're kind of garbage is because they'll just say like general things that could apply to anybody. Like, oh, you, you know, you get nervous around crowds, but you're very assertive when it comes to doing tasks or whatever. And <laughs> just like, oh yeah, I do that. I am shy when I drop that. Like you, you'll you'll un unwill or indirectly project yourself onto the horoscope. And so, like main protagonists and or attractive people tend to be uh, of that nature. They have these qualities. Um, uh, but to make like really attractive characters that let's say you are different than what you're used to seeing like if that's what your goal is then one of the strategies that you got to do is to basically um, look at people who are attractive but in like a different world than you're used to you know um, like I have like a whole folder called gorgeous on my Pinterest which is all about like finding very attractive women and of all walks of life and I just put them in there and it's, it's really helpful whenever I try to draw an attractive person from time to time. You know? And so, hold on just a second. All right, but essentially, Cassandra, like the way the to to really kind of get away from it is to just find people that you fit, feel fit the bill for the the attractiveness that you're aiming for. Uh, at the same time, that is not looking at the same old references that you're you're normally going to be looking at. It's it's always it's always good practice to to look at what has already been done but also make a good effort looking outside of that. And a, a way to think about it is like, think about like whatever reference you found, uh, it feels like really easy to find like one Google search, then it means that most people will probably find it too. Uh, again, this is why I like using Pinterest over just Google search or like staying on ArtStation for instance. Not because I don't think these places are great to find resources, uh, it's just I just know everybody else is using the same things often, especially for visual re reference. So it's it's good to kind of mix it up. And Pinterest specifically uh, is really good because it's it's like a collection of art from or, or like images from all around the place, like all over the place. And it's like collectively good. It's not like um, Google search, which is kind of, kind of like a bunch of garbage. So anyway. I have a question. Yeah, man, go for it. Um, so last week, um, rendering the characters, I was having trouble uh, rendering holes, like cloth. Uh -huh. And I wanted to study that. I started studying, like trying to understand how how that works. And I wasn't. I, I don't know if. I wasn't getting anywhere. Like, uh, I know you you explained this a million times. <laughs> <laughs> How to study, you know? But 
I don't know. I was just having trouble how to figure out how it's exactly that stuff works and why the shadow and at some point and what. So how would you, I guess the question is, how would you study fall specifically? Um, wait, can you restate that question just a little bit? I'm trying to, but if I was trying to like to, get my daughter out of my room. She keeps, she keeps on coming in. She's trying to look for something. <laughs> And uh, I'm sorry. All right. I, I don't mean to be rude. It's just how it is. No, no problem. Uh, so the question basically is, how would you, if you had to understand faults, uh, again, how would you study them? Exactly. Well, what, did, what did you do? What I did? Uh, so first, I, I tried to copy just some images. Uh -huh. And then I try to look in at reference, uh, make different shapes, and 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 basically uh, create the folds from there. You know, as if that shapes were cloth. Yeah, but did you do any tests? No. All right, well, that's the problem. Um, so, so this is why I always recommend you do tests. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a problem. You don't know how something works, right? Yep. And and then you go and you go and test it, right? And yep. it's really bad. Like, let's say it's a math problem. And you do the test and you find out you don't know how to do with anything on the test. What does that tell you then? That you don't know. Uh-huh. So then what do you, would you, you do? You don't know to, the subject. Yeah. So then what would you do to get better at this? We study whatever or try to understand it. Yeah. And how would you go about st understanding it? Like what would be steps you take? That's, that's my question regarding uh, faults. I am not really sure. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Do you though? I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I guess I. I don't. That's why I'm. I'm asking. But like. In terms of anatomy, if I try to uh, draw an arm or paint an arm, um, mm -hmm. I I can't do it. I know I know what to do. I would go and try to understand the muscles. Okay. Really so did you try to go understand you know? the folds? Yes. Okay. But so how how do you draw folds? Probably. That's. That's the thing. I, I was having trouble understanding them. Even okay. So even then, I, even. so then, what should you do if you have trouble understanding them? What should you do? Uh, study, study. Them. Yeah, but how? I like I, I always say, study. This is true. Yeah. But but I apparently I haven't elaborated enough what I what I mean by study. So. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an answer. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you answer it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's it's way more valuable to you if you answer it. You'll remember. You won't forget this time. Yeah. So I need to understand how faults behave, like with tension and. There you go. When when they when they, I don't know. I lay down and they get support. Yes. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's 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 the problem. I I, I try to find out like in Pinterest a lot a lot of studies of different people that could help me like get a grasp of what I need to understand or how they work. 
Um, but still, like, but still what? I don't think I don't think I don't think I I I got it. I don't know if I was oh, doing it all so, right. So let me let me let me put it to you in a different situation. Yep. How how many times have you practiced cloth? Like seriously. Uh, last week, uh, maybe a couple of hours. Okay. Uh, maybe a few times before that. So let's say you've never done anatomy before. Yep. Okay. And let's say you've only spent the same amount of time you spent a cloth, but now this time it's anatomy. Do you think you would have really amazing skill at anatomy? Yeah, I know. No, right? So, so yeah, it's, a, it's a false sense of, you're having a false sense of struggle. Yeah. What I mean by this is that this is natural. Whatever you're feeling is normal. You're not supposed to be great after a couple studies. Yeah. Yeah, you get it? You get where I'm going with this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So if you feel like you haven't gotten any better, then that's why you have to do tests. And then if the tests reveal that you really suck, then that's why you have to study. And then you study and you do another test and the test uh, says, no, you still suck, then maybe what you're studying was wrong, so try again. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're studying something, it's not supposed to be easy. That's the whole point, right? Yep. It, it is actually supposed to be very challenging. In fact, the, the less you know about it, the more challenging it's going to be. It is almost inherently going to be a lot harder, right? So, mm -hmm. so what you have to do whenever you're, you're practicing and trying to study whatever it is you're, you're learning, right? You have to be able to separate when you are doing good, like when you're practicing something that you're actually good at, right? Because you'll feel better because when you're already good at anatomy, you'll, of course it's going to be easier because you already built a strong foundation, right? Yeah. Versus something that you rarely ever train, right? Like, okay, if we go to sports again, it's like, if I've never played rugby, I'm not going to be good at rugby. <laughs> you know, it's just not going to happen. And then yeah. if I go and play and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get why I'm not good at rugby. I've only played two, two hours. It would be, it'd be so crazy <laughs> for me to really believe in that. Right. And then, and then the same thing goes for, if, let's say I'm really good at rugby and then I'm like, all right, now I'm going to play some football and I do really bad at football. And I'm like, what? I play two hours of football. I don't understand why I'm really good at this. I mean, have you ever, especially in sports, have you ever experienced playing with somebody who isn't really that good at something and they get so mad every time they make a mistake? Yeah. Right? And, and yeah. especially to me, like when this happens, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, relax, dude. <laughs> it's really? like, it's just a game. And we're not playing for keeps, you know what I mean? Like, this is just, we're just hanging out. It's just a game. Yeah. It's just a game. We're all friends. This is no competition, you know? We're, we're, the, the anger is unjustified is what I'm getting at. The stakes aren't that high, you know? Now, if yep. you were at the Super Bowl playing for the, you know, Super Bowl, rings and all that championship and you're a wide receiver and every day you've caught balls like that's your job you're the wide receiver you catch balls that's literally your job okay and the quarterback yeah. throws the football at you and you drop the ball and you get pissed that is justifiable that anger is justifiable mm -hmm. because you are skilled at this thing everything lined up for you to do the thing that you're supposed to do and you failed you know, you can, you can then say, all right, I can, I'm okay with this person being upset at this moment, you know, because it, it's a pretty big deal. The stakes are pretty high, you know? Yeah. And so um, the equivalent to this could be like, you know, working on a freelance job and, and not following through, right? But this is not that stake. Like, this is you just trying to learn how to do cloth. This is where you're supposed to suck. So uh, I'm really just critiquing your ability of being so hard on yourself. Like it's 
it, it's it's like the situation I just gave about the person who gets way too mad at something they're not, not necessarily supposed to be good at. And more importantly, this is just, we're just doing it for fun. Like in this case, you're doing it just for training. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think I, like, I, I don't, I don't, I understand what you say. I, I, I heard you saying it before. So, uh-huh. and I, and I believe it. I believe it. I, maybe I did. I, I need to reframe the question. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. So I would say that this, um, last week I, I tried to study, I studied clocks, all right. And faults, especially, uh, and what I did was try to uh, first try to look at pictures and try to understand how those faults uh, get to um, behave, how those faults behave, how clothes behave, and I tried to replicate it. I copied a few and then. I try to make my own shapes with with the the folds that I wanted to do inside those shapes. Is that a good way? Is that a good way of studying folds? That's you know what I mean. I, I know I know. So so the the way you answer this question on your own is: Did you feel good about your folds afterwards? Did you feel like you accomplished uh, your goal? Maybe a little bit. Maybe, okay. Uh, I definitely, I definitely have to do it. Have to do it more. Definitely. Yeah. Well. Well. I mean, getting back to kind of what I think you're asking. If you think it's the I'm best a- way, the best way for me isn't necessarily the best way for you, right? Sure. So. Yeah. What I try to do is try to teach people how to learn in general, right? And so what I'm yep. trying to tell you is that that's why you do tests. Because when you do the test, it will tell you whether you studied effectively or not. Yeah. That's, how I I learned, that th- that's how I learned that copying was not the best way to learn. In general, I think most people don't learn that way very well. There's even scientific research that's been proving that this is true. Like repetition, blind repetition is just not the best way to learn, right? Sure. And so, so for me, I try to get people to, to learn this on their own because sometimes you got to put your hand on the stove to know that it's hot, right? So I could tell yeah. you, I could tell you to not do something, but if you, you don't listen and you keep doing it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So I, I have to like, uh, you have to sometimes just do it on your own before you take it seriously. And so what I try yeah. to do for people is to get them to think this way, like to find ways to think. So, so I think that of course studying in that way can work, but that's why you have to test it. Like, so a good example would be, okay, I'm going to study cloth for about an hour. And after an hour, I'm going to hide all my reference and I put all the way in my notes and I'm going to draw cloth from memory. Mm-hmm. And if you cannot do it, if it's really challenging, then that means you might've not actually studied cloth. You might've done something else. All right. Okay. And that's okay. It's okay to learn that you may have done something wrong. You know? All right. So so maybe with what you're saying, maybe what I did was like a, a pre-test in which I tried to create my own faults looking at reference. I was not copying, but I still wasn't I still wasn't you, using you my my full my full um, memory or yeah you weren't knowledge. you weren't you were still kind of an autopilot right like there was still someone else kind of writing the thing and that's actually a good way to practice too by the way that's not a bad way but to truly feel like you actually understand it like try to draw it like right now without yeah. any rever- and like and you'll realize immediately what you where the gaps are at okay mm-hmm. and then and, and what that context does it helps you redirect the way you experiment and test yourself and the way you study mm-hmm. yeah but don't you think don't you think uh still the question is still a valid question it's not uh because don't you think like learning 
the process of other people also can can help with absolutely. their own process. Yeah, if absolutely. It, even if it is studying or I don't know, going to the gym or drawing or creating absolutely. a character. Yeah, it's just the way that I do it, I just told you. <laughs> yep. You know, the way that I would figure out how to paint cloth is like, okay, I'll look up some reference and I'll be like, okay, what's the what's the pattern here for my reference? And what I've learned over the years about cloth is that you like let's say you have the surface and then you drop this cloth onto this surface, right? Basically everything tapers from that, and then you just create the the lines in which it's tapering and then you can mm -hmm. kind of create these um these loops of drapery and then those are forms and then you just paint those forms sure. and i learned that i learned that from just looking at folds like religiously for quite a while i even yeah. have a pinterest board all about fold folds and so then like um uh how does this look when it's in different situations like when like well what other situations can cloth be in well when it can be in when uh an arm is folded <clears throat> right so how does that work well it just bunches up then it's like well what about the material the material plays a big part and how we feel about folds, right? Like if it's a thinner material versus a thicker one. Yep. You know? Yep. But that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like I just practiced that. So here, here's me giving you straight advice on how to practice folds is to draw an object, put a draped thing on top of it and see if you can make it convincing looking drapery mm -hmm. do it on your own right. then then learn why learn why you can't like what is it that you're not understanding right just sure. like you don't understand anatomy like you would go learn anatomy so learn the anatomy of a fold like how does a for fold form like what what goes into making a fold all right and it's act folds aren't as complicated as you might realize it's actually pretty simple now making it like scientifically accurate might be really challenging right but just make it convincing is not that challenging actually it's, you'll be surprised it's actually pretty simple yeah i don't think i don't think it's hard yeah like to be, be clear it's hard but it's not as hard as you think okay like i would say that like anatomy is 10 times harder it's like a million times harder <laughs> okay because yeah, anatomy yeah. Uh, is incredibly complex. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Folds, you just got to learn like different materials and how the apex of folds work depending on different objects that it's folded onto. Like I, I, I would say that I know like 75% of how folds work, you know, and yeah. that's that's enough that's enough yeah. <laughs> yeah like for the kind of work that i do i don't need to know anymore uh, after that most people understand what's going on mm -hmm. right yeah but we gotta remember um like I, I remember i had a student once who was telling me like he was doing these studies and he's like yeah i was doing studies all day and like i couldn't draw a giraffe still like i studied the draft I still couldn't draw a giraffe like the next day. Like, what the hell, you know? And I asked them, yep. I was like, well, let me ask you a few questions. And I said, how do you draw a giraffe? And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, like, how does one draw a giraffe? And I was asking, like, like how many heads tall? How many heads tall is a giraffe? And he's all, oh, I don't know. And I was like, okay, how, how many body or how many heads wide is a is is a, a, the body of a giraffe? And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, okay. It's like, how do do zebras or I'm sorry, do giraffes have stripes or spots? And if they have spots or stripes, why? And they were like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
And I was like, it seems like to me you didn't study at all. <laughs> you know? And and they were just like, well, no, I studied by, like, by just looking at it. And I was like, well, there's a huge difference, you know? Like, like studying by looking at means you just copied. Yeah. But studying by like actual observing and analysis means you you're learning it. And I, I like, again, I used the example of like math and stuff like that because it's easier for people to understand that concept, right? Like, if you can't finish, if you can't do a math test, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean um, like if you were to just mindlessly go through the answers of the book? Like, did you actually learn how to do the, the work? Yeah, one thing is to just read a book without even... Yeah. And another thing is reading a book and trying to understand what it's saying. It's the whole, like, street smarts versus the book smarts argument, right? Like, you, yeah. you got to put it to the test, right? Like, you can read the philosophy on how to be a really good basketball player but if you've never played basketball it might be really an eye-opener for you right you need that context yeah. of like what it's like to do the thing that in which you're studying and i was trying to explain to them like you just don't understand like giraffes because you didn't really study giraffes you were just looking at them and drawing pretty pictures that look like giraffes you don't understand why giraffes look like that and I like to yeah, right. I like to use this as, a, as an example, like you know how to solve an equation, right? I won't do it now, but usually I'll just like do like a math problem and I'll show you how to do it. And most people, are like, oh, yeah, of course, I know basic algebra, and I'm like, great. So the 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 point of the 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 homework that I gave you, right, is to try to understand the subject. So if I were to just give you a whole different problem, right? If I were to give you a different equation to try to solve but all you did was copy the way that i solved my equation meaning like you didn't look at the method you just looked at the numbers and just copied the answer so if the answer was two for the first equation that i did and then you just assume that all equations the answer is two you're gonna be you're gonna be real wrong when the times come when it comes to the test right yeah you're like you yeah. need to learn how to solve for x not just make everything x equals two and uh, when i explained this to the student like he understood really quickly he's like oh i get it like i'm not solving for x i'm just copying the answers and and, and that's not giving me any substance and i said yep pretty much sure sure yeah, yeah so again it's normal to feel crappy about your studies right that's the point um, like I'm learning how to do Unreal and stuff, specifically lighting. And I just couldn't figure out how to get the lighting to work. It was just looking like trash, you know, but I understood it's yeah. just because I just don't know. Um, there are plenty of examples of people not having that problem. Like they're doing these amazing lighting and rendering. Like there's like realistic freaking environments <laughs> that I've seen, you know? So clearly I just don't know what to do. Right, and so um, I look into it. I just try to figure it out, and now I'm at the point where um, I feel pretty confident about it. But even still, I just subscribe to a channel and I'm watching it, and uh, the guy basically goes over the whole lighting situation again. It's a whole different person that I'm learning from, you know. Yeah, but it's to your point that you just made earlier. Like, there is value in learning from different people's methods, and I agree. You know, because I'm doing it right now, and the reason why I agree is because when you understand one method and you watch someone else do a different method, it expands your overall knowledge, right? Because yeah. that, like, let's say person A has like a really foolproof way of doing it. You follow the way they do it, and it's great. You're like, this is perfect. I can now do this thing. But I'm going to go ahead and still look at this other person just to see the similarities and the differences. Neither one is right or wrong. Just I just want to see. And then let's say the person B does it too. But they do like, let's say X, Y, and Z, right? But then there's A and it's completely different. 
And, but that difference is really, really fascinating. And like, it makes you really like think like, oh, you know, with this new information, the possibilities, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, but like, if you have a hard time just getting started, I, I almost will always focus on just trying to like build a foundation of getting the right, like practice and study in, you know? So that way your mind is prepped for new information is um if you don't have like a foundation to build off of right like you can get really discouraged really quickly you got to just remember just like until you understand it at a very basic level uh, i wouldn't worry about next techniques that's what i'm getting at right like you 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 can just take you could just take a cloth like a towel of yours or like a, a bed sheet whatever and just hang it over your chair and just look at that you don't need to like go anywhere else right like um, you could take like a lamp and take pictures of it from different lighting situations, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. That was, that was, I, I wasn't having any doubts on my ability to understand or true or false. I was having doubts on my process. Yeah. I gotcha. That's now it's, it's pretty clarified. Yeah, let me say something too about that. Um, the The process to getting better is the one I just gave you, like the the study and yeah. the test. That is the most foolproof way. It is the one that works for most people, like ninety nine percent of the people, maybe ninety. I'm not that confident. Okay. And the reason why I say it works a lot because it puts in place the scientific method which is one of the greatest human inventions we've ever had. It's this idea of you create a situation where you come up with a hypothesis and then you do a, an immense body of research to see, just to see if someone has already answered this question for you, right? That's kind of where you're at right now. Like you need to look mm -hmm. into it. You're just gonna like discover it yourself. And then once you've discovered it, uh, that no one has probably answered the question or maybe you feel like you, your answer is resolved, then you put it to the test. Then you put it through experiments. And that's the test that you haven't been doing as much as you should. Mm -hmm. And then once the test is resolved, then you look at the test and you remember this one simple idea. The test is not supposed to be easy or hard. It is only yep. easy or it is only hard depending on your skill and what you've learned. It is easy if you learned a lot. It is hard if you learned nothing. Yep. And that's it. It's that simple. You know, don't take it personal. Don't feel like you did something wrong. Like, no, you just didn't learn enough. So then when you go back and say, okay, when I was studying, I was doing uh, copies. Maybe what I should do is trace it. Let's try tracing it. And then maybe drawing a three-dimensional geometric like shape over it so I can see the 3D because I just feel like I can't see the 3D. You know, do whatever it takes to understand it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you test yourself again. And now you're like, ah, now I can kind of see it. The tracing totally worked. But for this instance, it did. Let's say you do anatomy and you try tracing and it doesn't work. You need to do one where you have to see the muscles in movement for you to truly understand it. Right? Then you understand mm -hmm. the three-dimensionality of it. You get, you get kind of where I'm going at? Like, this is a foolproof way because it constantly makes you test yourself in all different circumstances. Yeah, but if you've, but if you've been following my uh, Facebook, you 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 would see that I have like these new rendering tests that I've been doing, right? And that's like mm -hmm. exact, like that is living proof of what I do when I don't know shit, <laughs> you know. And I'll I'll show you too. I'll show you some some like deep red research. Let me see where where are we at? Okay. So, got this Facebook messaging group. We just talk about stuff. Okay. So, I did these first studies, right? And, man, I, I had li literally, like, little to no control of what was going on. I was really challenged to get to this level. And even before this, like, I had, like, these, like, weird, like, artifacts, the lighting. Like, this, like, this is the roof right here. And this is the sidewall, and then there's like light bleeding through. So I was like, the fuck? 
<laughs> yeah. And so then I tried to create like a different room and I created this room right here and I felt pretty confident, but still there's like some weird shit going on. You know? Now this texture mm -hmm. and stuff looks pretty realistic, but that's not because of me. That's because of the texture. It's really good. Yeah. What I didn't like, even though this is pretty good looking, I just pulled off like it's basically fake. Like I just, I just know I don't really understand what's going on, but I got a good result. So I felt comfortable to try to go a little further and I did. And I was like, ah, this is cool. But I still feel weird about it. Like I still feel like I don't have control. Like why is the roof like that? That's not realistic. You know? Yeah. And then I was also looking at these walls. They look like uh, plastic. And I was like, okay, I need to try again. You I know, mean, I was still proud of it because I'm making progress. All right. So then I was like, okay, let me try something a little bit less complicated and see if I can create like lighting situations that I have control over. And again, this is really a challenge to me. This was whole thing was like a challenge. And I was like, God, this is not going to work out either. And like the way that I modeled, I, I used the, the 3D geometry of the, the engine. And then I, by, what I did learn from this, what I was really happy about was how to, to scale textures. I learned a lot about that from that study. But not lighting. Lighting was garbage. So then that's when I started doing these. Just really simple, like red rooms, like colored rooms, and just like try to like create my own geometry because that's ultimately what I want to do. And bake the lighting to make it look pretty impressive. And this is pretty close, right? Yeah, that's pretty I'm feeling cool. it now. This looks really real, right? Yeah. And then I did a one more, and this is the one right here. This is what I did this morning. And I was feeling really good about this one. And I was able to build this in like half the time that I did all the other ones, you know? And now I um, really feel yeah. like I have a good understanding of like the rendering and lighting in uh, Unreal, right? Yep. I mean like right there, especially like walking from the shadow to the light looks realistic, it's crazy. So then um, the next conundrum in my mind is like, okay, so this is great when I'm dealing with solid colors, you know, but I, I like, I did this not because I was trying to make a game that's like all solid colors. I don't, I, I can care less about that. I was doing this to try to understand lighting and color at a very basic level. And then it made me realize, okay, the problem that I had with these ones, this one and the other few is that I didn't know the light, like the local value of the materials beforehand. Right when I was setting up mm -hmm. the lights. Where with this, I've learned that I am setting up the local values first. Of red and yellow, yeah. Yeah, with the red and the yellow. And, and it wasn't, it was, it was an, an accident. Like I didn't know I should do that. I yeah. just discovered the value of doing it. This is what I'm, what I'm saying. Like this is the power of studying. Like you discover methods. Like this is why I'm so, um, especially when you watch a lot of my gum roads, like a lot of them, where I'm like really articulate about how I do certain painting techniques and stuff, right? It's not an accident. Yeah. Like I'm very observant of how I learn and what I learned, you know? Yeah. Because that's how you can replicate something over and over again if you know the anatomy of it, right? The, the systematic process of it. And what I'm trying to tell you is like, you might not know that yet, man. Like you gotta like <laughs> keep practicing, you know? And you'll discover these little things. So, so my next test, I'll tell you what it is. And you're probably going to see it eventually, right? If you follow me on Facebook, especially. My next test is to basically start to concept design environments and their lighting just from basic material and values. And then once I understand how my lighting setup looks at a very graphic and a very simplistic setting, then come in and find materials that match that, that those values. values. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna go well, but it might not. Sure. There's only one way to find out, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, but that, I'm already having like strong suspicions of what I can do as a way to speed up my process. This is like the equivalent to me learning, learning that mastering my values before my colors is of value to me, Yeah. okay? So this is like, again, me like was putting the, the horse before the, or the carriage before the horse, right? I was trying to like get these super realistic looking things without understanding the fundamentals of lighting in a 3D engine. Mm -hmm. 
And so mm-hmm. I went back to the basics because this stuff wasn't working. I just didn't feel like I was moving in a pace that I understood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just telling you, yeah, I'm just telling you because that's just how it is. Like you just got to remember that um, you can't make shit if you don't know shit. <laughs> okay. And so yeah. it's that simple. And so guess what? Like all last night I gathered like tons of reference on just lighting. Yeah. You know, like I, I take pride that I'm a really good lighter, but it's only like a simple character not like an environment where I have to worry about it bouncing around and all that kind of cool stuff. You know, if it's a very basic scene, I can probably do it. But like, if I want complexity in my scene, I need more of an understanding. So I found like really great reference. Like I found this real reference of like curved shapes and how that creates certain types of lighting situations. Yeah. You know, uh, this I reference, looking, like this is really at, helpful. Uh, for the stage design or like for theater and stuff. Oh yeah, see? That's pretty cool also. See, that would probably be useful to me. Yeah, that's what I said. Thank you. But that's one, but like the difference is that I would probably study it, even if I didn't understand it, I would keep going until I did. Like that's mm-hmm. that's the big difference here, right? Like I don't let something, something as small as me being, me not understanding something, stopping me from understanding it, that's all I'm getting at. Yeah. Right, like yeah, you, yeah. you got to realize that it, it, like on the surface, you're right. You have this cognitive understanding of how, like you know, you you know what I'm saying to you, right? Like you you agree, you're like yeah, of course, you know. But yeah. it's different from like there's a difference than just agreeing with me uh, as well as putting it into practice. Yeah, right. but but with that example, your experience with the environment design, uh, what you did is was changing your process of how you practice and study. Yeah, because right? the results demonstrated that it wasn't getting me to where I wanted, so I kept on changing it until it did, uh-huh. until I so, understood yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. With my question, I was trying to make sure that my process of, because when you say study, and like to learn anything, so basically you need to study and then have a test, right? Yeah. I, I, and I did the same but, thing. But the, yeah, but the thing is, when you say study, that changes a lot if you're studying w- with the subject matter. No, it doesn't. You know what I mean? Well, what, yeah, the process changes because, I mean, if you study... No, study, study the study word study, uh, we, we need to define it. And so that way we can stop kind of dancing around it. This is when I, when I think of study, this is what I think of. The devotion of time and attention to acquiring knowledge on an academic subject, especially by means of books. We can avoid the last part of that. But it, specifically, the devotion of time and attention of acquiring knowledge. This to yeah, me is what I think of studying. Uh, this is also pretty good. A detailed investigation and analysis of, of a subject or a situation. When I think of study, this is what I think of. If you think of anything else, then yeah, we're not on the same page. No, no, no. That that doesn't change, but it changes. Uh, the process changes. The devotion of time and attention to acquiring knowledge. So, if mm-hmm. changing the process is what you need to do to acquire the knowledge, then that's so be it. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like yep. for me, what you're telling me is I studied a certain way and it's not working out, and I'm saying you're not studying. That's what sure. I'm trying to say. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. Like I'm yeah. not, I'm looking at the macro level of the definition. You're looking at it as like a, a nuanced level, right? It's yeah. kind of like the same thing whenever people say, "Oh, well, that's just your theory, right?" Well, it's just a theory. You know, like when they say the theory of evolution, well, it's just a theory. Yeah, like, they don't understand what that means. Like a theory is not an opinion. You know, a theory yeah. like, among scientists, they don't think of it as an opinion. They think of it as like a collection of an enormous amount of facts that is, yeah. allows them to create highly and reliable predictions on many different things, right? Yeah. Uh, because the theory of evolution has allowed us to create a lot of the modern medicine that we have today because of this understanding of common ancestry that we have with all the other animals and creatures and living beings on this planet, right? Mm-hmm. That common yep. understanding and a common ancestry allows us to expand our knowledge. Whenever someone says, well, that's your theory, 
or that's just a theory and they kind of downplay it as if it's an opinion like an opinion would be like i like star wars you like star trek neither of us are right or wrong who cares okay mm -hmm. right it doesn't like it doesn't I, we can't make any assumptions or predictions in the universe based off of our opinions on movies you know but like for instance whenever people say that i said well you know you know what else is a theory is gravity like we don't know everything about gravity yet we put you know, gps satellites into space we have yeah. you know like th these things are obviously like we the, the theory is still obviously very useful to us you know what i mean and so when yeah. i think of study this is what i mean like when i'm thinking study i don't mean like the actual process of like just um doing this or that or that or this i'm saying the devotion of time and attention right to acquire knowledge or a detailed investigation and analysis right meaning mm -hmm. like this this can like if i was to say to you a detailed investigation and then you were to then come to me i did investigate all i, I asked everybody one question i would say you did not do a detailed investigation you, know, you get what i'm saying yep like you didn't look at the crime scene you didn't check out like the neighbors you didn't ask more than one question you know, you didn't challenge some of the people's questions. You know, you didn't get alibis. You didn't check the times. You didn't check the videotapes, right? You just, you just only asked one question. What are you thinking? You know, <laughs> and and that's when I think when I say you, you studied. You're like, well, I did. I did this one thing. And I'm like, no, man. <laughs> you know, you gotta keep keep going. You know, until you truly understand it. And it may take time. Like I said, it takes time. It's not easy. You know, it's really hard uh, because if studying was easy, then everybody would study whatever they wanted and to be like experts at everything, right? Uh oh, did the government come for you again, Mateus? No, no, I can't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear people in the background. I think it's the government. <laughs> yeah. On the ground. yeah, you got five more minutes. <laughs> we allow you to talk in this country. Ooh, yeah, wow. but. But uh, but do you understand what I'm getting at? I'm not trying to 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 really like um, hound you on this, but I, I really want you to understand what I what I mean study. Okay, and it, it's not entirely your fault. I haven't really detailed it that way, but uh, whenever I say it, I just assume most people would would uh, understand, and that's that's my fault as a teacher. You should never assume. Yeah. So uh, yeah. hopefully now, I think now with that definition, I think you, you understand what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah like, like, like you got to just remember, that it's not easy. It just isn't easy. And like a good way of thinking about studying as well is that you become an expert at the thing if you study enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no wrong or right way right um i mean there is better ways i will say that there's better ways to learn and study and i gave you yep. a good one which is you test the testing is the yep. part that people don't tend to do they just kind of like do the thing and then they don't test it they like study and then they just go straight to like straight to the races you know yeah and yeah. it's like no, no 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 first like challenge what you actually learned and so that's what i've been doing recently you know i've been just challenging what i've been learning that's kind of where I'm at right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. You can take uh, one more question, because that was a pretty long answer for that one question. I think <laughs> it's still pretty helpful, though. But still. Um. I heard there's a new horror game that came out called Visage. Thought I'd point that out. Maybe that might be helpful. Oh, that one. Yeah, Visage. I see that one. A lot of the YouTubers have been uh, playing that game. And talking about it. Visage. Okay, I'll check it out. There was a jump scare moment that made me kind of like yelp out in the middle of work, and everybody was like, What's wrong? And I was like, I felt very, very ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jump scares work, man. I, I still jump. It wasn't even like a like a classic jump scare. Jump scare. It was just more like a, you know, like something just kind of passed by whoosh. But it was just the moment was just right. It just made me go like, <gasps> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, jump scares work. 
they're, they're they're very popular in horror genre too because because they're easy to do. You just kind of like you just set the calm and then you just throw a random. I think it was very powerful because they held up. They you know like you know like a good a horror movie would be just like scary moment. Oh no, not really. Oh, scary moment. Oh, not yeah, really. And then just anticipation. Yeah. And then just when you kind of like. Oh, it's going to be like, oh, scary moment tease, and it's not going to happen. Oh, now it happened. You know, that kind yeah. of like. Really There's a thing. game called Fear. It was a first person shooter. It wasn't necessarily like a horror, like, it wasn't like scary, scary, but it was definitely had its moment. Oh, you played Fear? Yeah, I love that game. That oh, was a good one. Yeah, I remember there was a moment, it was really, really great, like where you're climbing a ladder, and this is like normal, like climbing ladders in games is just like whatever. So I was climbing this ladder, and then I at the top, I yeah, that. it's really iconic. And you, you get to the top of the ladder, and there's a little girl, and it's friggin' scary as hell. It's really great. Um, there was another game that did some really good scares. I think it was one of the Bioshock games. Essentially, like um, you're like working on a contraction, and then once you're done, it the game like automatically makes you turn around, and then there's like a person. Oh yes, that's that just standing right there in front of you. Yeah. So that was another good moment. Like, so I think like yeah, games tend to do a good job at this because um, it's interactive. So when you're playing, the one that I haven't played yet was uh, Alien Isolation. Uh, oh, I play that one. Yeah, I heard it was good too. But it's like it's the kind of game that I think I like, right? Like it's the one alien, and it's just you, <laughs> you know. And so you're just uh, you're just trying to survive. So I'm really interested in that. Did you get my um my message with the uh, leaders of fear? Yeah, Did you I'll ever check play that it out. Game? No, I've never heard of it. Um, there was another game on the the GameCube. Eternal Darkness. Yeah, you got it. Nailed it. I I love what that game did because it, it did stuff. Breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, it does it a lot. Like I remember my friend was playing it and he was trying to save and it was like glitching out and it like said that his all his files were deleted or something like that. <laughs> like, oh my god, no. Yeah, and it was just part of the game. Because part of the game is that like it's like a psychological like it messes with your mind. And I was like, I love I love that kind of stuff. Uh, the game the trailer does that too. Um if you've played the first Arkham uh Asylum for the Batman yeah. game. Yeah, they, there's. I mean, it's not a classic horror setup, but like they did some really cool stuff to really mess with you. Yeah, so that stuff's cool, man. I like it. I like when games do that. PT trailer. All right, that one. Yeah, that one's probably the best example, or any like even like a, a MSG, right? Like uh, Metal Gear Solid. I remember playing. Uh, what's his face? The 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 bad guy that's like reads your mind. So he can read your inputs. I love Psychomantis. that. Psychomantis. Psychomantis, yeah. And then I remember my friend was like, oh, dude, you got to like unplug it and put it into the second port. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that and I was like, what? This is amazing. And have, you, have you played the Force game where he finds you again and uh, he's like, he's trying to do the whole controller vibration trick. And I think the, the first generation of a PS3 controllers they didn't have um, rumble for the longest time. And he's trying to make the controller rumble because, but because the PlayStation 3 controller doesn't have rumble feature, he gets very frustrated. He's like, what's going on? And, and it's just another funny moment that Kojima likes to do. Yeah, I like that stuff too. Cool. I'm going to stop here, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I, you. Um, yeah like I said, um, you know, studying is really valuable, guys. And for me, it is the staple of my diet. Like this is just how I roll. And you know, it's it's something that I I I understand that people understand, but they just really don't do it. You know, they just don't. And and that's the problem. And then when the, when it comes to like trying to like, you know, pull through, then they, you know, they they're not sure what's going on. And it's just like you just don't know the subject. Like Usain Bolt said it best. The race is easy. Training is really hard, and I agree with that. So that's a good one. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great little one-liner. I don't know if it's exactly what he said, but it's pretty good. He paraphrased it. Uh, Will Smith. My wife just showed me a video today with Will Smith, and he is saying something along the lines of like, "Everybody wants to like kind of build that big wall, like that big brick wall, like right away." 
But really what it's about is placing that one brick perfectly, placing that one brick perfectly in the spot it's supposed to be before you lay down the next one. And I think that one's a great uh, analogy as well. Anyway, peace out, friends. You guys have a great yeah. weekend. Push yourselves. Yeah. This is We're going to be going on to the final week. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Laters. Right on, Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.